<sighs> Welcome back to Yu-Gi-Oh! Anime Review, Part 2. In this one, we're reviewing the second season of Yu-Gi-Oh! Duel Monsters, a 48-episode season. Now, for the first few episodes, they do use the same opening uh, title uh, Im uh, cards they used from the previous season for the first few episodes. And then they switch to the... Um, by, by the time they actually have uh, the first official... Now, if this season has to battle, they turn around get to that in a minute. That's when they show up the new opening titles. The first duel for the season that started up is Yugi vs. Bandit Keith. A brainwashed Bandit Keith who basically sort of takes Yugi hostage in this warehouse and uses an oversized duel arena. Oh, and by the way, this is actually the last duel of the series where... Um, where the where they used the original rules from season one, uh, because starting with this season they started using uh, the new rules basically where the whole thing of sacrificing lower level monsters high, for higher level ones, and also having the attack points being uh, four thousand light points. Mm -hmm. Now this is actually one of two two part duels that Yugi would have in this season. Yeah, because generally. Um, all the rest of Yugi's duels were generally three-parters. Well, three or four-parters, like one three-parter. Uh, There's like two four-parters, and generally, um, generally up until the Battle City Finals, uh, Yugi would fight for his first few duels. Basically, would be uh, three-parters, except for the first couple of them. Uh, he does beat Bandit Keith, though they shadow the Lane puzzle, and Yugi gets caught up in the fire. And then, like, next ep next episode that comes after this, basically, apparently a month had passed by. Um, okay. Oh, yeah. And, um, Yugi is kind of down. And then, one of the most hilarious things, like, they also bring in, like, a few new characters this season. They bring in the Rare Hunters, which, by the way, this is the only season that they're seen. Uh, there's also Merrick, um, Odeon, and Ishizu. Now, Ishizu and Merrick... Both have Millennium items. Shizu's got the Millennium Necklace, which allows us to read the future. And Merrick has a Millennium Rod, which apparently allows to send people to the Shadow Rod and also brainwash people. As a matter of fact, I think it's like one of two that does that. Um, I think the other one is um, the uh, Millennium Ring. Um, like, there's one particular one where... Um, well, I'll get to that in a minute. So, basically, after the two-part duel, you have a few standalone episodes... Like one, like basically, Kaiba wearing his brain spanking new attire, which he would wear for pretty much the rest of the series. The whole uh, blue eyes, white dragon inspired look, uh, with the exception of what he did during the Grand uh, Grand Magic Games arc, uh, Gra the Grand Tournament arc, where he would wear like a suit most of the time and put on the outfit once. But generally, for the rest of the series from this season onwards, he would wear this white suit. Excuse me, there was a variant of it uh, at the end of Season 1, I believe it was, where, where it was blue instead of white. But yeah, he would wear this attire for pretty much the rest of the series. Um, yeah, and all of Joey's duels, uh, with the exception of his uh, fourth duel with Yugi, uh, his three duels he had in this season, uh, where he would fight... Uh, well, there was actually one duel he had prior to the start of the Battle State Tournament, where he lost his Red-Eyes Black Dragon, though... Uh, that got replaced with, um, uh, because he lost that, uh, his Time Wizard apparently is his rarest card, which, okay, a 500 life point card, okay, 500 attack point. Yeah, apparently that's his new rarest card, uh, because he lost Black, uh, Red Eyes, so he only has three duels. He has one against, uh, Esperoba, which is a two-parter. Yeah, basically three two-parters, and then basically he has a four-parter, and then I think he has, um... One, I believe, I think it's like one, I think uh, his, his uh, playoff one, I believe, is a four-part, if I'm not mistaken. Let's see. It is a, uh, let's see. It is a three-parter. Yeah, he has his first three-part later on in the season. Um, his second duel, he fights against uh, Weave Wonderwood, uh, which still does his usual cheating thing they did in the previous season. He loses. And, um, of course, he gives up two Lunar Care cards instead of, like, one. Yeah, that, that's the thing with this season. Uh, the object is getting Locator cards, these transparent cards and puddle pieces. Now, there's actually two ways to basically show what the Battle Finals are. One, of course, is put all five together, and that gives a map. The other one, they actually show a little bit later on in the season, which I'll get to in a minute. 
His third and last duel of the season, where he, where he gets uh, uh, locator cards, is against Mako Tsunami, where he gets not only his locator cards, which he goes past the finals anyways, he also gets uh, two rare cards. Uh, one, of course, is a whale. The other, of course, is a fisherman, which apparently is supposed to be a reputation of, of the guy's father. He was in Twitter for some time. Um, yeah, Mako Tsunami, prior to this two-parter, had only appeared for about a few episodes, per se. Uh... He only appeared for a couple episodes. One, one, one episode was a cameo prior to the tournament. The other was basically uh, another brief part. And Mako, basically, who knows a lot about fish, uh, even though, that, yeah, he got in trouble for basically he had this sort of reputation of SeaWorld, uh, he decided to volunteer this because the actual person who was supposed to do it got ill. So he decided to take over, which was nice of him to do that because he knows all about fish. Uh, so he knows how to please a crowd. And plus, even though it's supposed to be a fish show, uh, they have a duel there, and it's a pretty interesting duel. Yeah, it's probably one of the best duels of the series, uh, one of the best duels of the season. Um, let's see. Uh, Esperola, Joy gets Jinzo, a card he uses a handful of times throughout the whole series. Yeah, that's the thing with Joey. Uh, some of the, the rare cards he gets throughout this season, he doesn't use them very much after the season wraps up. I don't really don't know why. It's very bizarre. To say the least. Because clearly he has these cards and he doesn't bother to use them. I have no idea why. He just doesn't. Though Jinzo does show up in the next season. I'll get to that in part three. Uh, the only duel Joey has is actually four parts. Is his first duel with, with Yugi. Which that way I'll get to in a minute. Now, Yugi's actually his first official duel of the Bows here. Which by the way, just by sheer coincidence. I don't know if the animators did this on purpose. Where... Uh, the same episode where he has the first duel of the Battle City Tournament. He also has the first duel of Duel's Kingdom. It's also, the first part is when they show up new titles. Uh, the opening titles they would show up for pretty much the rest of the season. Now they do show, with one particular image they do show, which apparently takes place during the playoffs of the Battle City Tournament, or the final sequence, where Yugi faces up against um, uh, Merrick. Well, the regular Merrick, not the evil one. Uh, that doesn't happen at all. Yep. Um, let's see. Um, Yugi has his first duel against a rare hunter. Yeah, they don't reveal what this guy's name is. Apparently, he's actually one of the weaker rare hunters. He beats him and gets the rare black dragon back. Because he stole from the him from Joey in the previous episode. Now, my guess is the reason why I switched these dual discs. This is my personal theory. Uh, the reason why they switch these dual discs is probably for money purposes because they had to keep showing off those two big oversized arenas. Now in this season altogether, they only have just the, the oversized dual arena in just the opening episode, but for pretty much the rest of the this, this season, uh, they don't show it off and after the rest of the series. The oversized dual arena thing would only pop up a few times after this because they decided to stop using it because they think it's outdated so they switched to the the, the dual disc which is a, which is the default thing to use for pretty much the rest of the series which I have a tw I have actually have a version of that basically in real life though this may have plastic now I don't, I don't know what the I think I think it's made of metal in the show I think so where it's a, like strapped to the wrist has the dual disc in it and uh, they apparently carry these things around with them and um, the thing also comes with projectors, basically. Uh, though, my big question is, and this is a question I have that uh, that or actually a lot of people ask for the whole series, um, how did those projectors get back to the Duelist? Do the Duelist just pick those up, like, right after the duel is over? As far as I know, this question has never been answered. Heck, I ask this, like, every time, even while the series was on the air, I kept asking this, like, um, after the duel is over, do those things go automatically back into the dual disc, Or do these... Projectors have to be picked up. Yeah, I don't know why this question was never asked. Uh, I'm sure fans have asked this question, uh, but I don't know why this is never explained in the show. Uh, let's see. So Yugi's duels, aside from his duel with the rare hunter, he duels a mime, which was a three-parter, uh, first of several three-parts of the season, where in this duel he gets slight for the sky dragon. With this particular card, he uses several times of the series, uh, used in the season. He's used a few times season two, uh, at least once in season two. Uh, he used it a few times in season three. Uh, as far as I can tell, I don't think he used it in season four or five. I think it may, maybe used it once in season five, but yeah, he used it a few times. But he doesn't use this card very often. 
There's also this duel with this magician guy who has a red dark magician. Who, uh, yeah. Now here's kind of the weird thing about this guy. Now the mime himself popped up a couple times prior to this report, to his duel with Yugi. Um, yeah, and also during this three-parter, uh, uh, Merrick is on the way to, to, to Domino City via a boat, which, by the way, up until this three-parter, you only see him, like, in, like, a room someplace, and it turns out this room is actually a boat, and, yeah, uh, they had this throughout pretty much this whole, up until this particular arc, and then Merrick just rides a motorcycle for a little while and basically forms an alliance with, uh, with Iwa Bakura. Which does come into play, uh, which d does play a factor throughout the rest of the season. Um, yeah. Let's see, what else? Uh, the only other duo I can think of Yugi had was a four part routine with Kaiba to fight itself against, um, what, what, what was these two guys' name? Uh, it is, um, these two guys are named, um, Loomis and Umbra. Yeah. It, it's it's actually a really good four-parter. And despite the fact Kaiba and Yugi do not like each other at all, um, uh, they have very good they have very good teamwork. Uh, for, for, for better rivals, they have very good teamwork with each other. And because Kaiba considered this an official... Now, they had beat these guys before, got one located card apiece because he was looking for Joey. Uh, then they found these guys again. I'm like... Okay, where did these guys get more locator cards? Did they steal from the area hunters? Who knows? And they had this duel on top of a skyscraper of all things. Which apparently is supposed to be a mall. Or something like that. Yeah. Now, in the 4Kids dub, they say that when you lose, you fall into the Shadow Realm. Which makes, honestly, no damn sense. Uh, in the actual... Uh, I remember reading this in the manga. They actually go to hell. Seriously. Oh, and Yugi's duel with... Uh, the the crazy magician, yeah, those stars. Oh yeah, and the dub is oh yeah, they go to the shadow realm. But in actuality, they get their legs chopped off. No, seriously, that's what happened with them. Yeah, it's one of the most bizarre things I've ever seen. So, in the case of rare cards, uh, for for Yugi's last duel prior to uh, his fourth duel with Joey, yeah, his first two duels he does get rare cards from those two. Um, as for the last one, nope. Yeah. Uh, let's see. Um, during the uh, force duel between Joey and Yugi, apparently the Fairy Hunter decided to go after Tristan and Serenity, which uh, Tristan goes goes to pick up uh, Serenity from, uh, basically gets her transported to Domino City because Joey's busy. So yeah, and of course for the first part of the season, uh, because. Uh, Serenity's got, like, uh, a blindfold, uh, basically got bandages over eyes. Yeah, she has to be told, like, a particular duel. Uh, during, uh, Joey's first duel with, I believe, it, I believe it was during his duel with, um, uh, Weevil, I think it was. Mm hmm Yeah, duel with Weevil, which he actually does win. And, of course, the kid, hi and this court, this kid hides because of, well, he thinks that the, um, because he hides because he wants to get x-rays. I'm like, really? X-rays? That's why you're ready. I've had x-rays before, and they do not hurt at all. Though, my x-rays, basically, I had dental x-rays of my dental x-rays of my teeth. Yes. Yeah. X-rays are painless. You may get some radiation, but it's harmless radiation. It doesn't affect you at all. Yeah, it's very silly. Um, yeah. So, Tristan go gets Serenity, takes her by train to Domino City. Um, of course, he gets some food anyways. And here's kind of the weird thing. Uh, despite the fact Tristan being one of Joey's best friends, yeah, Joey develops an attraction to Serenity. And he's one of two guys to do this. The other, of course, is the guy who later saves them. Like, they're being stalked by their rare hunters, and they're trying to get, get away from them. And they're getting close, and all of a sudden, one of the guys can hit with a, with a dice. Yeah. And it's Duke Devil who saves them, which is absolutely hilarious. And they beat the crap of these guys, hide in the truck, and yeah. And Tristan tells the guy, yeah, um, to you she's off limits. You remember, uh, you remember her brother Joey? And he's like, is he the guy who put in the dog suit? <laughs> and, and Tristan tells him, do me a favor, don't bring that up. 
<laughs> that would be just so hilarious. <laughs> yeah, and then um, uh, and, and then they get rescued, and it was worse. Morgan had to show up, and then they get rescued by Mai in her very uh in her convertible. Uh, by the way, this car would show up frequently the rest of the season, and then Mai would stop driving for some reason. I have no idea why. It's quite weird. Um. Of course, Taya had mysteriously been kidnapped along with Mokuba for some reason. Yeah, the Mokuba got away, and then uh, Yugi, Kaiba, and Mokuba decided to ride to where Joey is, where, where, where the Rare Hunters headquarters is, uh, via helicopter. And this, of course, is right after the double duel. Um, yeah. So they go save Taya, which. This is quite weird. Apparently, they decided to, uh, the trap basically in order to have Yugi force the jewel, Joey. Yeah, they have a crane with a giant, like, uh, crate box on top of her head. Yeah. <laughs> and, and, and Kaiba basically rescued Taya. Does one of the most hilarious things. Uh, does one of the most hilarious things. First, he throws one. He throws his blue eyes white dragon card at the rare hunter, and then this remote control helicopter comes completely out of nowhere. Apparently, Kaiba called it via his lapel communicator. Yeah, his lapel. Is, yeah, the KC. Yeah, apparently that that's a wireless communicator to Kaiba Corp headquarters, where this helicopter comes in and knocks over. Uh, oh, apparently there's a uh, this crane had a bomb. Where yeah, he, he had the beat at a certain time limit. He beats up the rare hunter, knocks the crane over, and saves Taya. Which apparently Joey uh, Yugi owes him a paper for that, anyways. Uh, it's probably one of the most interesting duels I've seen. Oh yeah, and apparently, even though Yugi ran out of light points, apparently uh, a side effect of this duel was that uh, Red Eyes is still on the field for some reason, and. Uh, he uses he orders the, the he orders the red eyes to attack him personally so so he can get all their keys out. And um, at one point, Taya basically now Serenity is trying to take off her bandage because she wants to see her brother duel. Uh, Taya tells Mai not to let that happen because she will be she'll have nightmares for she'll she'll know, she'll basically be horrified when she sees basically Joy brainwashed. Yeah, so. Uh, so Joey frees Yugi uh, while Yugi's about to fall into the ocean via an anchor of all things, and he's like, "Dang, I got the right key." And then Serenity basically decides to take a dip, save him, and then they all, uh, of course, Kaiba and Mokuba t take a helicopter back to wherever the Valley Finals are, and everybody else decided to like everybody, my Joey, Yugi, Tristan, Joey. Serenity, even Duke, does that all hop in Mai's car? And of course, Mai is sort of in a forced duel. We're like first of two duels the whole season. Where she duels a guy apparently is an old boyfriend of hers. Yeah, she wins. Though apparently one card of his apparently was real. It's quite bizarre. And Joey saves him. And Joey saves her. Yep. Because all the viewers know Joey had a thing for Mai. Yep. And of course, they then he says like, "Oh yeah, word in the street is that like, yeah, put put this like put all your wheelchair cards on the dual disc and uh, put one card where the field spell is, and it shows up via projector where the, the Battle City Finals are, supposedly, and they get there and it's on a blimp of all things, yeah, a Copper Corp blimp, and they all go on board, even though that Duke, Tristan, and Taya are not duelists, they're allowed on board because well." Excuse me. At, at the, they're allowed on board because it, because Taya saved Mokuba, and plus they're friends of Yugi. Though I think in the now here's kind of the weird thing: Duke has virtually zero interaction with Kaiba, at which is quite weird because they're they're both competitors in business. Uh, of course, he owns a shop, and plus he owns a rival game to, to uh, a game that rivals uh, Duel Monsters, and yet, uh, here's kind of the weird thing. Throughout the whole series, the only characters Kaiba interacts with of Yugi's friends is just Yugi himself, Joey, Taya, maybe Tristan, but not Duke, definitely not Serenity. Yeah, Serenity, he does not interact with her at all. Um, yeah, so they go ahead, they have the Battle State Finals, and 
they had the first duel, which is, and of course, Bakura, I should mention prior to this. Yeah, apparently, up until this episode, he apparently been in the hospital. He knocks out uh, Sawamoto, basically breaking his back. And then he decides to steal some cards, because he needs to go into duel. Fights uh, Bones, uh, Bones and two other guys who were um, uh, Bandit Keeps henchmen from the previous season. They show up for this one episode. And he duels them in the Shadow Realm of all things, and he beats them. Gets their six, uh, get their five locator cards. Yeah, it's like whoever wins this duel goes automatically to the finals. Yeah. So, and then of course he wins. Send these three guys to the Shadow Realm, and these guys are never seeing the series ever again. And then of course they have uh, Bakura versus Yugi, which is actually the second time the series this has happened. They do fight one more again, time again in the final season of the series. Uh. Yugi bows, of course, Yugi is told prior to this like, episode before, like, you have to use your Slifer Sky Dragon because that's going to be out of line. So, Yugi uses Slifer, beats Bakura in three episodes. Yeah, it, it's a three-parter. Uh, then, the next episode, you have uh, Odeon. Uh, you have Yugi, uh, you have Joey versus Odeon. And, um, and this is actually Joey's, uh, though. The previous episode was a force duel. This actually is his first uh, three-part duel he's actually had of the entire series. Yeah, and it's a pretty interesting duel. And Joey wins, even though and somehow during the duel because basically Odia is given a fake uh, raw card. Uh, the wing dragon, uh, the wing dragon got a bra, and they're both not unconscious. And the other, and and Joey wins by simply standing up. And he's automatically declared the winner, and the other one is not going to count. Well, and of course, that the guy who hang out with who the thing is Merrick, who the thing is some guy who, who and of course, Sodian was posing as Merrick, and heard this guy was really Merrick all along. Apparently, uh, Merrick had a bad side, got let out. And of course, in the very next uh, two parter, it's Mai versus Merrick. Mai loses. Mai gets her Mai intent to shut her up, and he does one of the most unusual. Uh, mind game I've ever seen. His mind game is that he basically has people lose their memories. Yeah, or apparently loses all the memories. Yeah. And Kaiba is not believing the Shadow Realm. And this is actually one of two times that he kind of basically gets is seen the Shadow Realm. The other time is basically when uh, two other times. he does. This also happens next season as well. He's like, yeah, this can't be real. Yeah, this is a common thing with Kaiba basically. He thinks that Magic is just not real. Yeah. So, Mai loses uh, the duel, and she's basically rendered in a comatose state for pretty much the rest of this season and almost the entirety of season three. And then they have the last duel of the season. Actually, there's two more duels after this one. One is um, Kaiba versus Shizu, which this duel is surprisingly a two-parter. Unlike the last two, where they were, um, let's see, yeah, let's see, I'm trying to think here, um, yeah, the last, uh, basically, um, let's see, the, um, Odeon versus Joey is a four-parter, Yugi versus, uh, Bakura is a three-parter, uh, Mai versus Merrick is a three-parter, and this one, surprisingly, is a two-parter. Yep, yeah, this one. Uh, Shizu gives uh, Yugi her Malay necklace, and of course, uh, Shadi shows up for this episode. First time appeared since the previous season of the series. Though after this one, uh, Shadi would not appear in the series again to the final season of the show. Mm -hmm. And of course, after this final episode, they have a two-part at end of the season where they have its uh, Merrick versus. Uh, Eva Merrick versus Ibukura. Interesting duel. And it's fought in the Shadow Realm. And the whole thing of like bodies disappearing thing. Bakura is Eva Bakura surprisingly loses. And uh, the Millennium Ring is. Uh, and this is very weird. Apparently, uh, Merrick still has some mind control over Taya for some reason. And allows her to keep the Millennium Ring. Yeah, this is never explained. Of how in the world that she manages to do that. And. So she go she has the brainwashed Teo basically is 
good procure, a good good Merrick goes to Siege and says, "You gotta move Odeon quickly," and and here's kind of the thing. Um, Odeon basically, it looks like that he was going to do the same thing in a flashback, where he takes Melania right basically as a knife inside of him. Basically, it looks like he's going to stab him. Though, oh, he sensed the Shadow Realm. Yeah, it looked like he was going to stab him. Yeah, and apparently, um, Merrick and Shizu's father, I think that, um, uh, Merrick, that New Merrick did the same thing to his own father as well. Apparently, he killed him, even though in the show they said, oh, in the dub, oh, he was sent to the Shadow Realm. Yeah, it even looked like he was going to murder him. Yes. And they don't show this. Uh, the dub actually cuts this for some strange reason. Though I kind of get the reason why. There is a scene in flashback of Merrick, the tattoo that's on his back. Yeah, that was forced on him. That's basically carved into his back. And Odeon did the same thing to his own face. Yeah. A mark he would have... For pretty much the rest of the series. Oh yeah, and Odeon is actually um, adopted. Yeah, first Ashizu born first, then Merrick. Ashizu is a gorgeous woman. Yeah. And her brother, surprisingly, has got white hair for a little kid. Yeah. And the flashback of them is quite interesting. Mm -hmm. Where apparently, oh yeah, they apparently snuck out and... Um, oh yeah, and Odeon basically the child was found in a well of all things. Yeah. So you get interesting backstories told with these characters. Um, so overall, it was a really good season. Um, got a lot more multi-parts this season than the previous season, and unlike in the last season where where two of these two parters were added to one episode, yeah, the the whole mass editing thing that uh, four kids did in season one, it's kind of like they toned it down. Yeah, I know about four kids. Basically, they're they're stupid edits. Though this season, it looked like they didn't edit that much out, per se. But, uh, one thing I mentioned, though, that the strongest suit of the dub is the vo is, is the uh, is the performance by the, the dub actors. Yeah, they all do a really dang good job. Um, I'm not sure if they swear in the sub or not. I have no idea. I've never actually seen... The only one I've actually seen where the characters actually sub is in One Piece. Yeah, One Piece, all the characters swear. Um, in Yu-Gi-Oh, they don't, surprisingly. But, yeah. So, that's really it for this one. Uh, stay tuned for Part 3, where Season 3 has two arcs. One is the sequel to the Virtual Reality arc, and the second one is, like, the second half of the Battle, is the Battle City uh, uh, Finals. Yep. But, uh, until I see you all in my next video, bye.